For regular videos on ancient cultures and forgotten civilizations, please subscribe. One thing that I've encountered many times in my studies of these subjects is how common it is for non-specialists to confuse natural concretions with human-made objects. The Gulf of Kambat, formerly known as the Gulf of Cambay, is a few hundred kilometers distant from Dwarka. In December 2000, the National Institute of Ocean Technology, or NIOT for short, were performing a routine pollution study with sonar when they ran across what appeared to be regularly spaced geometric structures at a depth of about 30 to 40 meters. That's pretty deep. Comments were made at the time that they kind of resembled the ruins of Harappan cities. S.R. Rao, who had worked on Dwarka, commented that the only conclusive way of establishing the antiquity of the site would be to study pieces of submerged pottery from the same area. According to Dr. Bardinarian, chief scientist of the team from NIOT, fired pottery pieces were found that were carbon dated to 31,000 years before the present, which would make it the earliest fired pottery ever found in the world. The NIO team has been accused of interpreting geofacts as artifacts. Dr. Neil Kenyon, a marine geologist, said, quote, the materials dredged up from the Cambay site and presented as human artifacts all appear to be well-known natural geological features and fossils, familiar to any sedimentary geologist who has worked in the Indian Ocean, Arabian Sea, or Arabian Gulf region." Unquote. Marine geoarchaeologist Dr. Nicholas Fleming said, quote, "...my immediate impression was that these objects are mostly natural rolled pebbles, concretions, and other normal seabed phenomena. If I had found material like this on the seafloor, I would not have expected the public to believe that they are artifacts." Unquote. In the Graham Hancock documentary I referenced earlier, Hancock is far more interested in the Gulf of Combat finds than in the ruins found at Dwarka because he wants to find something from the Ice Age. Uh, can I have a look here? Wow. This is a treasure trove. Next, Dr. Badranarian took me to see some of the artifacts they've recovered by dredging the underwater sites. These are our uh, micro tools, yep. where you can see various uh, shaped uh, thin objects, well polished to use them for uh, various purposes. This is uh, like a spoon. A spoon, huh? yeah. yeah. Uh, you can see it is the shape of a deer they have made. Well, it's very interesting because it's carved the same on both, on both okay. sides. Human remains include a fossilized jawbone and vertebrae. And the artifacts show that these people were skilled in making pottery, jewelry, and other ornaments. This seems to have been almost like turned on some sort yeah, of... Yeah, it is. It, is a, it appears to be a, a very good artifact. Probably they had a sort of hand uh, mm. instrument to turn all these things. If you see, there's a hole also they are made through that. And, and this hole runs all the way through it? Yeah, completely. Yeah. So this is absolutely, definitively a man-made man -made object. Yeah, we did not know what it was. Most startling of all, a stone slab was discovered with raised markings which could push back the date of the invention of writing to the end of the Ice Age. He makes much out of the so-called artifacts that the NIO team dredged up. But even to my untrained eye, these do not look like objects made by humans to me. What do you think? Let me know your assessment in the comments. As far as I'm aware, nothing has been published in any scientific literature about these artifacts. The only place you can find the images or any discussion is on the internet, in popular books, or on popular TV shows. In my opinion, there is no there there. The archaeological remains near modern Dwarka seem to me to be the most likely candidate for the ancient city of Dwarka mentioned in the Mahabharata.